Hello guys, welcome back to the Eat Like Ruby podcast. I am back in studio today with an in-studio guest, perfectly timed for Mother's Day this weekend. I have my very own mother in studio with me. Welcome, mum. Thank you for having me. (laughs) (laughs) Mum's going to act all polite and nice (laughs) now that we're on the podcast. Making it sound like my mum's not nice otherwise. (laughs) (laughs) I just act nice. (laughs) All right, so mum is here, obviously, because like I said, coming out to Mother's Day, um, it's just cool. I thought it would be a vibe, but also because my mum is a personal trainer, she is what I would call a fitspo. Mum will be 59 next month. Yes, so 60 next year, which is so cool. If you're watching, you can clearly see mum is wearing a shirt that says lift more, age less, <laughs> which is awesome. And like I said, she is a PT, but she's just also a person um, heading into her 60s that trains, looks after herself, prioritizes nutrition, training, all of the things, not too big on excuses. And I just thought it'd be super cool to get her on and talk about that. A little bit of a different guest different perspective I think it's one thing for me to sit here as a 32 year old with all the answers but mum's um, obviously got what is that how much how old were you when you had me 27 26 no 26 yeah just turned 27 oh yeah Yeah. you would turn 27 and then I was born yeah 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 so mum's got 27 years on me so if you think I'm wise wait for this (laughs) (laughs) so let's start mum obviously like you can introduce yourself and whatever but I feel like I've already done that I think it'd be cool and I even said to you I think it'd be cool to talk about your nutrition and training journey whether it's the 58 year version or the two-year version I don't know but I feel like you have gotten more and more into nutrition and training as I have over yeah, the last... Yeah, oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Probably, I would say, over the last 12 yeah. years, like really since I was maybe like 20. Yeah, more when you started working at Fernwood yeah. at Moray Field, I pretty much just joined that gym to support you. Love it. <laughs> Mum has And then been... whatever, like, so we uh, we actually have... I We've done things differently, whereas most kids want to be like their mums. What do you want to do when you grow up? You know, whatever mum does, that's what I want to do. So <laughs> I grew up, I just had a job that pretty much just paid the bills and it wasn't until you started personal training and working in the gym and I came along to support you that I thought, shit, I really like this too and I want to do that. So I followed you rather than... Yeah, this is so know. cool because I feel like obviously we're going to get into all the nutrition and training stuff today, but even that is really a career change. At, oh, yeah. Well, even... Mm-hmm a career like you embarked on a career Mm. you didn't even really have a a particular career up until that point like you said you didn't even have it have a desire to have a career I left school at 15 got a job in the butcher shop and did that yeah forever and then just did the mum like obviously I just wanted to be a mum that was my that was my dream to be a mum love it so then yeah you were in your what how old were you when you started studying fitness 49. This is incredible, guys. How good? Like 49 and it's like I'm just going to fully go after a different career. I mainly actually did that Cert 3 like to for purely yourself. to see if my 50-year-old brain would retain information <laughs> because I really didn't go to school. Like I've, I, I left the day I turned 15 and got a job at the local butcher shop and that was it. So I'd never really studied and I didn't know how to. Tell you what, I absolutely hated every second of it. Studying? Yep. <laughs> hated it. Hated it and didn't even do my Cert 4 after that until... Later on. Later on, yeah. yeah. But I feel yeah. like there's so many little cool things in that as well because you even wording it like, I wanted to see if my 50-year-old brain could do it. So many people would be like, oh, my 50-year-old brain can't do it. Mm. Like, I can't study because I'm 50. So I just, like, we see shit like that all the time. So I think it's just so cool that you're like, oh, I want to see if I can do it. And you actually did it and you did the thing. Like, it's it's so cool. Just to put into, I'm um, like a little bit of context for people. Mum's got two kids. So obviously myself, 31. And then Rach is my older sister, um, 33. Yeah. Yeah. So mum had two girls in your, like, mid-20s, really. Yep. Yeah. So say, like, before your 20 or like when you were in your early 20s before having kids what years that was like what the 80s so were you like 
a dieting person? Were you like body conscious? <laughs> like I have no idea because I feel like we're so exposed to all this shit now, but I like I wasn't even alive in the 80s. So it's like what was the, the dieting mindset or your mindset at that time? So I was f- food conscious because of your dad. Yeah. He was like, yeah, he was right into the health and fitness and so always ate well because I was cooking for him. Yep. I love takeaway. <laughs> like nobody loves that more than me, but always did that. So always knew how to eat well because, yeah, because I was always preparing food for your dad. Um, but in the 80s, the gyms were just for men. Women didn't go to the gym. How crazy. Uh, until like aerobics. Yeah, at Living Newton John, let's get physical. <laughs> And then, and then there was this, like the fancy sort of gyms started the aerobics classes, so the women would go to the aerobics. And I, I never, never done aerobics until years later with you when, when we you went. were like twelve or something. Yeah, but um, yeah, your dad used to go to the big bodybuilding gym around the corner, Tarzan and Jane. We used to go there and watch the <laughs> bodybuilding competitions and stuff. I remember actually, maybe, maybe your dad and I just got married or before we got married. And we were at a barbecue and I didn't know anyone. It was people from his work when he worked at Telecom. I was the youngest one there and all these people had their kids and it was like a real family thing and all the men were over at the barbecue having a beer, chatting and all the women were sitting around with the kids. And I was sitting there sort of twiddling my thumbs and I saw this woman walk in and everyone goes, oh my God, she's here. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And this girl walked in, this woman walked in probably mid-twenties, and she looked amazing. And while she was walking over, they're all bagging her. Oh, she goes to the gym. Look at her. Look at her. Look at all those (laughs) muscles. She looks like a man. (laughs) And uh, that was the first time I'd ever heard of a woman actually strength training. That is crazy. That day, yeah. And that's what, probably 30 years ago? Easy. Yeah. More than 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. probably 35, 30, even nearly... 40. Don't you feel like the side note, like <laughs> 80s or 90s was like 10 years ago? And then, yeah, <laughs> actually, no, it wasn't. Yeah. So that was, um, so I remember looking at her thinking, wow, she looks amazing. Uh, but it still wasn't accepted yeah. for like years and years later. What a yeah. boss. I wish we could find her and get her Yeah. <laughs> I love this. That's really but cool. But everyone else, they were all like, yeah, sort of bagging her for it. Yeah. Wow. So then, obviously, you had Rachel in 1990 and me in 1991. After having kids, like, did you have any sort of, like, more, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Were you, like, heightened awareness to then, like, I need to lose weight or anything like Um, that? Not really. I mean, as I said, I was always, like, that food conscious because of your dad. Being a new mum was, like, I was active. Like, I had two kids under two, so, like, it was... Yeah, like active, so I never really used to. I think I was one of those people that sort of would join the new gym for their new opening special, and then <laughs> a couple of months later, we're like, oh, I'm not really using it. So then you'd sort of they got yeah, ya. yeah, they so, got yeah. <laughs> so and until I actually joined Fernwood, actually, you might not even know this, but I had a bad experience at the pub one night and my drink got spiked. Yeah, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, and I was sort of even really too scared to go for a walk. So, like, around the streets and that for a little while. So, I joined the gym at Fernwood in Frankston. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and then you used to come with me and sit over on the couches and read the books yeah. and stuff. That was – I remember you saying to me one day – I want to work at Fernwood. You said, when I grow up, I want to work at Fernwood. And you did. <laughs> and so. I did, guys. <laughs> so, I'm, I could actually retire. I'm actually done. Yeah. That was sort of my first introduction to some strength training. Yeah. Yeah, you girls wanted to come and that was quite an expensive gym. They didn't offer any like junior memberships or anything. So then yeah. we all joined that input. Yeah. And we used to go to aerobics. Yeah. Like. And then we just sort of did classes there because you weren't old enough to do Other the stuff. weights and stuff. Yeah. So we all just sort of did the classes with Wendy Wood. And look, she might listen to this because <laughs> she's just started following you recently. <laughs> So if she's listening to this, I'm just going to tell her, since I've become a personal trainer, I get my 
in a Wendy happening when I'm on that stage <laughs> taking the classes. <laughs> yeah, she was great. She, she was just our yeah. aerobics instructor, but she was just a vibe. Yeah. She would just go for it. Yeah, she was really good. You went and studied fitness at 49, which is awesome. And I remember, like, just as a little side note, we see people studying now, especially fitness. I'm just going to say it. People study fitness and they sort of scrape through. Like, they do the bare minimum mm. and whatever. Mum is not like that. Mum's literally going to read every word, watch every lecture. That's why she hated it. Yeah. It took her eight times longer than anyone else <laughs> because she's like follows the rules. But that's cool because then obviously, you know, you got your certs and everything. So then I remember like I had the other day, I had a memory on Facebook that was your like shout out to my mum. She's teaching her first class today. Yeah. And I think it was four years ago it said. Would that yeah, be about um, right? Yeah, I think it was like late – Feb, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. would it be 2019? Yeah. 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 So mum teaching her first group fitness class. At, so what would you be then? 52 or 53? Something like that. 53. Let's say. Yeah. <laughs> Four years ago. 54. <laughs> 54. Yeah. Like that's so cool. I feel like age doesn't become a thing or age isn't a thing until you know a certain point and then it can suddenly be like quite obvious so Mm. what I mean by that is like do you feel like you've hit a point let's say you started your like fitness journey if we will like 12 years ago give or take have you noticed between that time and now is shit harder do you feel like are your joints sore is it harder to lose weight Mm. like anything at all no I don't I don't think anything's harder but probably the hardest thing is more Going through menopause and your body shape changing without warning, (laughs) that was like hard. So, yeah, but at least being in health and fitness, all of a sudden you think, shit, I need to change what I'm doing. Yeah. Got a bit, yeah, like started lifting heavier for that reason. (sighs) Can we just acknowledge that? (laughs) Because so many people would be like, Body's changing, nothing I can do, quit the gym. <laughs> Mum's like, body's changing, up the weights, let's fucking go. Yeah. I but love yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that was probably mentally the hardest thing. Look, I'm a big believer in, I say to everyone that comes to my classes, because most people go, oh, you're taking the class, it's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they walk out, if I'm filling in for someone else, I go, oh, it's you, and they turn around and go home. Mum, you're not <laughs> selling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but I always say, I think, like, Exercise is as hard or as easy as you want it to be. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. So if you if you do have an injury or yeah, you are like ninety nine percent of the people that I train are women fifty plus. Right? Yeah. And this to tell you the honest truth, they're better than the ones that are in their thirties and forties. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that whinge. The ones in their fifties and sixties and seventies. If the ones in their seventies, I say we're doing this, and they go, okay. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. When I used to teach at Jolie's, it was massive retirement community. Mm. And I think it's just this underlying thing. It was so cool when I worked there. Like you've got all these, you know, like your typical oldies and they sort of come in and they might crap on a little bit or whatever. And you kind of write them off. And then when you start talking to them, you're like, shit, you've had one hell of a life. You've got a great story. Mm. And I think when you start to see that, it's like you have been through some of the craziest shit in the world. Like you actually don't care about doing squats. Doing yeah. squats is a dream after <laughs> yeah. the shit you've been through yeah. in your life. And I think that's the thing, like, sometimes when people are young or whatever, they just, you know, they're conditioned to be like, oh, it's hard, I'm going to whinge. Like, it's that yeah. real surface level thing. Whereas, like, yeah, I think as people get older, it's like, oh, squats, that's fucking mm. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Exactly. That, yeah, some of the ladies that I train, like, they've just, I have one lady and she had, like a bad accident younger days and she can hardly do, like, anything, like, you know, what, what I've planned for the class but you look over and there she's just doing what she can like she's yeah. just you know but she just wants to be there she wants to be in the gym I think it's a social thing at that age too like they all go for coffee afterwards you know that yeah yeah but they're like literally there's some of them I could just say all right everyone just take your knickers off put them on your head and we're going to run around the block and they'd go <laughs> oh okay <laughs> like they would no matter what you tell them to do they'll do it you know that yeah. yeah but the young ones are like you say okay well we're gonna you could pick up a heavier weight than that oh no I didn't sleep well last <laughs> night like really <laughs> can we see where I get it from are we seeing where I get it from <laughs> no that's so funny and I think it's such a good point exercise is 
as hard or as easy as you make yeah. it. I am the biggest believer in that. You know, when people are like, how do I make this training program harder? And mm. one example I love to use, and the reason we sort of, that, that can get frustrating to a trainer is because like, so people like you and I, like we said, we've been training for 12 years. We're still squatting. We're still lunging. We're still deadlifting. <laughs> There's no crazy advanced movements that people no. are suddenly going to be able to do or need to work up to doing. It's the same movements. We just do them better we do them heavier we yeah. might do a few more every now and then but I think people think the actual exercise and the programming and like it just needs to be advanced and more yeah. advanced and fancy and supersets and yeah. bands and all of the extras especially when you see on YouTube and someone's doing some bloody <laughs> just sitting backwards on some machine going crazy and you're like <laughs> yeah and it's like the same shit and I think a perfect example and I often will post this in like my um, 10 week program group or whatever if I told you to do one squat right now like one body weight squat you would rate that as like a one out of ten high yeah like it, it actually could not be easier like it's bloody easy unless there's an injury but for most people one single body weight squat if we were to then say do one squat with a hundred kilos on your back that would become a 10 out of 10 hard the single only thing that has changed there is the weight yeah so people are constantly and the reason I say this if anybody has a coach or has been in Eat Like Ruby, does an Eat Like Ruby program or whatever, in Trainer Eyes, we rate the session at the end. How hard was the session? And we often see people rating around that five or six mark. And it's like the single only <laughs> thing you've got to do there is up those weights a bit. Yep. If you're getting to the end of a, a session every week, like every now and then you might just be like, oh, that felt easier or I didn't have it in me to push today or whatever. But if every week you're just like, oh, that was five out of six. Oh, that was five out of six ramp it up <laughs> it's not hard here is your advice here is your warning but no matter ramp how up. no matter how many times you tell people that they don't want to hear it <laughs> like yeah i i write a program for people you know like you know you have that basic sort of start off program and you say to them like every week like we want to get heavier every week and then you see them a few weeks later and say have you Put that weight up. Oh well, I was going to do it next week. I'm like, well, you weren't because you weren't going to do it at all if I wasn't here. <laughs> or they'll do like I'm. I love push ups. Like push ups are my thing, and I can't stand it when people do them on their knees. I just think, what's the point? Like, can we just acknowledge if if you need to do them on your knees, this is fine. <laughs> but I just think like I'm a big thing. I think. We all should be able to push our body weight up, pull our body weight up, yeah, hold think, our body weight up. I think the thing and, there is yeah. if we are at a point where we're doing them on our knees, keep going, keep progressing. Oh, yeah. More yeah. reps, but more sets. Yeah. Train train those muscles in other ways and don't settle for the fact of like, I do them on my knees so I will always do yeah. them on my knees. But I, what I was getting at was like <laughs> in an actual program in the gym, like in the classes, it's hard. Like they just do them on their, on their knees because they, they can't – progress it but in the gym when I write someone's program put it on the bar yeah and we want to lower that bar and I look and I think you haven't lowered that bar or you haven't even moved the bar if somebody else has had their bar up here <laughs> you just walk up and do them on there you don't even take it you know like and yeah, yeah and I, just... I think it's um people like and, and it's probably a lack of people truly understanding what we're trying to do in the gym because I reckon people in that situation with the bar they would think it's a good thing. Like, oh, this is way easier. This is good. <laughs> yeah. Shit, this is getting better. I don't hate this like I used to. Yeah. And that's where we need to find that sweet spot where it's like, yeah. if you're so chilled in the gym, like there's a sign there. You've got yeah. to crank things up a little bit. Yeah. If it's feeling way cruisier than it felt a month ago, you've probably, you probably yeah. need to push it a bit yeah. more. But, <laughs> but I feel yeah. like we came so far from the, um, has, has, has <laughs> shit gotten got harder? harder? No, I don't, I don't think anything there's nothing that really comes to mind so do you feel like in terms of training has there been things like we see with people maybe like knee joints or hip joints or backs or anything like that have you found like oh I used to be able to lunge for example and now I can't lunge me personally yeah has there been anything with you where it's like this thing that I could clearly do 10 years ago I actually cannot really do well now not really yeah that's really cool and for some people there is and obviously there's you know, some people actually will have arthritis and those sort of things yeah. kick in. But I think, again, this is just a perfect example of 
not assuming that that has to be the case. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting older, so my knees are gone. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I mean, whether it's my lifestyle that's made me this way or whether I'm just one of those lucky people, but I've never had a backache. I never have had an injury. I think once I had like a bit of a sore knee, I was after I'd done that park run and it was like uneven ground and I had sore knee for a little bit there. That's back so and funny. Rested. But I've, ne- I've never really had injury. injury. Well, Touch I broke wood. my broken wrist. <laughs> I broke my wrist, but that's yeah. about, yeah. But yeah, no, that's that's really interesting. Yeah, like I, and I sort of get frustrated when I spoke like when with the young as I said the younger ones seem to complain more oh I've got you know, my hips are out my back's this my back whatever and I think oh, come on we need to try and work around that rather than yeah, not do sure. something just for the hell of it yeah my god I could when I've got- I should do a whole episode on myself working around injuries <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but I think even coming back to your thing of like I don't know if it's lucky or it's my lifestyle I'd say it's a combo of both. Like I think there's 100% credit to your lifestyle. Like Mm. you, like we said, coming up to 60 and there are people in that same position that aren't living their life the way you are and are therefore paying the consequences. So there's, there's going to be an element of luck because we look at people like myself and Shaq who Mm. have had the same lifestyle (laughs) and, you know, have just had injuries. Like sometimes you're just unlucky in that sense, but I don't think it's a hundred percent luck because if we took, your genetics and your luck, for example, and put them next to a, or put them with a person, you know, you guys had the same genetics and luck Mm. and completely different lifestyles. You're going to get completely different outcomes. True. So credit where credit's due, old gal. (laughs) (laughs) Old gal. Well, I have a good role model, don't I, with my mum. Yeah. Oh God, she could be the next guest. Yes. (laughs) So mum's mum, what now, 83? She just turned 83. Yeah. So to put into context, she turned 80, obviously, three years ago. And we had a full-blown line dancing, like boot scooting hoedown for her 80th. And we went home before her. Yeah. (laughs) And she actually did. My God, I I wish we had footage of this. She did what I would describe to be an 80-year-old slut drop. (laughs) It was like the... It was like a burpee, I suppose, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but when you're 80, I feel like that's that could be called a slut drop. So she's a line dancer. Like, we're so off topic, but this is a great story. Mum's mum is so insanely active, line dancing, badminton, volleyball, all of the things, just such a go-getter. And, yeah, she had this big 80th hoedown line dancing thing, and they're all in their formation, and they've gone back and forth. And then my cousin said to me, wait, wait, there's a slut drop here. And I was like, What? <laughs> Next minute, they all jump down on the floor and jump back up and keep dancing. And she's, it's literally her 80th birthday. Like, it was next level. Oh, God. I, how great would it be to get on here? Yeah. Oh She'll God. listen to this. She'll have to have an hour. <laughs> You'll have to edit that. <laughs> She'll be shaming me for... She'll be, like, telling me the correct line dancing yeah. term. She'll be like, it's actually not called a slut drop, believe no, it or not. she probably love that. <laughs> believe it or not. In terms of, like, if we look um, at your health and fitness journey, I would say, over the last 10 to 12 years, how have you found, like, do you feel you're in control of being able to be like, I'm going to pursue fat loss, I'm going to pursue muscle gain? I think sometimes the more we age, the more people can think that there's not a lot of choice or control there. They, they couldn't really achieve fat loss if they wanted. They couldn't really put on muscle if they mm. wanted. Do you think that you can make those choices and succeed with a phase? Yeah, definitely. I've never tried a muscle gaining phase, which is un- what I actually want to do for my 60th. Oh, I want to, like, yeah, I want to... S- Should we sign you up to train like Queens? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> so <laughs> So given the nod. Yeah, I, um, that's what I want to do for my 60th. But I have a million things in my head. I want to go have family holiday, want to do this, want to do that, whatever. And then I thought, that's all good to celebrate it. But for me personally, I want to do a muscle gaining phase. And really, we are, let's say, 15 months away from said 60th. Mm. So the time is now. Yeah, yeah. This is cool. So we, we can come back to that because I do like that. But yeah, I could easily do a fat a fat loss phase. And you anything. have like yeah, the last yeah. time you did one with me, like where we sort of worked together, was I would say like eighteen months ago. Like remember, um, I'd say it was around like August, September, yeah. not last year, the year before. 
Yeah. Remember before you went away, you went on like a holiday in October and you were yeah. doing Eat Like Ruby. Yeah, like not the doing... last October, the October, yeah, we went to Early Beach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I remember, remember you yeah, lost I... a few kgs before you went. Yeah, and then I yeah made sure I, that the, the hotel had a good gym and stuff to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Mum is just selling yeah. herself, selling eat like Ruby's yeah, selling um, it. Yeah, so I could do that. I mean, I haven't done a fat loss phase for a little while, but I'm actually, I like myself at the I moment. Just Probably a, the heaviest I've been for a little while, but that doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm enjoying. Can we talk about weight? Yeah. Um, like just to put into context a bit, because sometimes, sometimes people just listen. They don't watch. Yeah. Like what, what do you weigh roughly? Um, about 66. Yeah, <laughs> basically twins. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm yeah. 66, but like we we always hang around yeah. that sort of in the 60s. Yeah. Um, I remember at my 50th, I got under 60. You were so... And everyone kept saying to me, oh, you look so good. And I felt like shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like, I felt like a frail old woman. Yeah, I really and that's, think, like, yeah. that's one thing I was going to say, um, even though you haven't, like you said, you haven't done a successful muscle gaining phase, I feel like you don't fuck around and spend a lot of time dieting, like restrictive dieting, yeah. like you eat well and you train well and you don't spend a lot of time like really pursuing a deficit or a fat loss phase or doing a restrictive diet. You actually have really great balance, I would say, with your nutrition, like good education, and you've found a great yeah. balanced approach with that. And I think as a result, you have quite a well built physique. Like mm. you haven't gone into a real intentional muscle gaining phase, but I would say you've spent a really big portion of the last seven or eight years eating really well, training really well. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost like we, we talk about on the podcast, finding that sweet spot where you're not actually going balls to the wall muscle gain, packing on the weight, but you're so insanely consistent for a long time yeah. that your physique just starts to build this good shape and it yeah. just look awesome. Yeah. Like I would sit here right now and say like, well, you've built a great looking upper body. That's like, my, yeah, I like that upper like, body thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God, imagine after a muscle gain phase. I know, that's what I would look for. We'll get to. you back. We'll yeah. get you back for a 60th podcast. Yeah, do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, it's so, like, great, we've locked them in for a year. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I track my food purely so I don't overeat, probably, because mm-hmm. I could tend to overeat. I love, you know, I love my food, but I don't yeah. want to overeat. Like That's probably what is harder as you get older. You do have to be a little bit more mindful. It doesn't come off as easy as it used to. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, but I don't um, – I think, and I still have my wines on the weekend. and Yeah, I yeah. think there's so much there as well because – Again, you're like, okay, it might not come off as easy as it used to. So, what do I do about it? Yeah, as opposed to, well, now I'm a victim to this. Yeah, I, I have I have heard some women say like that, sort of around my age, say, oh well, obviously that's just it. Now I'm never going to be slim. Yeah, but that's... but I suppose that's just like anything in life, sort of point. Yeah, how, how bad you want it, and it would be like someone saying, "Oh, I'm fifty. I, I can't study." And yeah, you're like, yeah. "Well, I did the damn thing, sister." Yeah, that's it. Okay, so obviously, with everything we've been saying, um, you're a trainer, like we said, your mum, two kids, like you said, you worked full time for a large portion of your life. So I feel like you have lived and experienced so many of the things that people use as excuses when yep. we think about it. Yeah, um, and again. It's easy for me to sit here with all the answers if I haven't lived those things. Like I work for myself. I don't, you know, and and there's pros and cons to everything. But I think a lot of the time we see people saying like, you know, I have a full-time job or I have kids. I'm a mum. I'm getting older. So many of these things are the excuses. What have you got to say about this? I don't know. (laughs) What I just said before, pretty much like if some, if you really want something, you you quite easily get it. I like a lot of people say, "Oh, I haven't got time to get my steps up." Like that's just crap. Like walk around your house. The people... It's one hundred and twenty sec, one hundred and twenty steps on, is around the outside of my house from going from the kitchen to the hall and through the bedrooms and around. It's one hundred and twenty <laughs> steps. Like so, you do and I do ten laps. It takes like not even ten minutes. This <laughs> if is it's hilarious. raining, or, if it's raining or it's like, oh shit, I haven't got enough steps. Well, Dave just looks at me. What are you doing, Dale? I'll just need some more steps. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. 
Um, no, that's really funny. And that's probably even a good point too. So Dave obviously being my stepdad and neither here nor there with health and fitness, but you again, don't use that. I think that's a super common oh, one for yeah, people of yeah. any age. Like my partner doesn't yeah. get it. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we could take that anywhere. <laughs> No, but I think I think we've almost covered this because it's like, what are the actual legitimate excuses versus what what am I telling myself? And I think mm. that's that's the case with anything in life. And yeah. we've probably riffed on that in so many ways in the podcast. But when it does come to age or whatever, like you might actually be at a point where it's like, yeah, my knee joints, like I actually yeah. have arthritic joints. I cannot lunge. This is not an excuse. This is a yeah. fact. And I think this is where we then say, okay, cool do I sit on the couch and cry poor me because I can't lunge or do I go down to the gym and talk to the trainer and say, what do I do yeah, instead of a lunch? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I have a couple of ladies that have like arthritis and stuff. You, you can work around it. There's always an, an alternative 100%. to something that I they mean, can't do. Like, yeah, they, quite often, like I take boot camp three days a week and 90% of those ladies are older than me. <laughs> That's and so yeah, funny. and they're like, oh, I can't, my wrists, you know, like one has arthritis in her wrists and we do a lot of push-ups in that because we don't have a lot of equipment. What can I do? You know, if I'm going to make, if I write that workout, I've stuck into the gym, make sure I've got some weights for her to do some Something chest press else. instead, you know, like, yeah. So there's always an alternative to, yeah, whatever they can't do. Yeah. And I always. mean... I can't speak on behalf of every gym in Australia, but like I've worked in gyms a long time. You've worked in gyms. A trainer is not going to be like, oh, you can't do it. Get out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's what we love. We love it when they come to us and say, I can't, I've got this injury. Can you help me? Yeah. yeah. And that's what we're there for. We love that. Yeah. I had a lady, this is just a cool story. I had a lady when I worked at Jolly's and you'll remember who was in her like late sixties, heading to seventy, and she had polio. Oh yes, I remember when her. she was a kid, and to, like super simple terms, but basically her one of her legs just didn't grow the same way the like other one tiny, did. Tiny, yeah, skinny, tiny, no strength. Like she really, her, her leg kind of stopped mm. growing at at one point compared to the other one, and you wouldn't even know. No, no, I if, just if, thought she had a skinny <laughs> leg. <laughs> And then when I got into it with her, she she was one that had had such a crazy life. And it was like, you show up here every day and you just do what you can. Showing up to classes, walking on the treadmill, just yep. doing your thing. And it's like, what a crazy story when we get into it. But yeah. you, it's almost like what I spoke about on the podcast with Shaq when I talked about my dad. It's like, she hasn't let that be her story. She's yep. not just like, oh, well, I had polio. Yep. That end. Yep. It's so cool when you see it. I, I love seeing like, it. I have an elderly friend. Um, she's had cancer three times. Oh my God. Buried two husbands to cancer. Oh she God. goes to the free park, park classes. Like in, in Bundy where we live, we have lots and lots of free exercise classes out in all the parks and on the beaches and stuff. So there's no excuse there for where yeah. people say, oh, I can't, you know, I can't afford the gym or whatever. Um yeah, and she just goes, 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 and she's mid-70s, I think, yeah, and she's amazing. Yeah, another lady came to the gym the other week, joined up. She's had cancer, and the a treatment has, like, affected all her bones and that, so, yeah, I'm working with her to get her strength happening and that, like, it's... How good. Yeah, I feel and like she's in her 70s as well. It's so... I don't even know what the word is. I feel like I want to say refreshing, but it's not refreshing, but, like... You get so caught up in your own shit and then you step out and you have these conversations with these people and you're like, oh my God, like I was, you know, people get worried about, you know, that half a centimetre increase on their inner thigh (laughs) and it's like, oh, love over here that's had cancer three times and she's still training. Like it's just, it just puts shit into perspective. Yeah, for sure. It's so cool to hear everybody's stories and it just, it's a bit of a slap in the face. And even like Shaq, we've watched Shaq you know, train in a sling for the last six months. Like I literally watched Shaq drag that sled up and down the gym with one arm in a sling for months. And it's just like, you do what you can. Yep. No, just like going back to like being older and in the gym and stuff. And sometimes I'm going to really like build myself up a little bit here. Sometimes I love it when I'm in the gym training and I look around and I think, God, I love being the oldest, strongest person in the gym right now. 
That's so cool. <laughs> Sometimes I look and I think, you could be a bit harder than that. But they're not. And they're like 30. <laughs> That's so funny. I've I got clients it. that have said that too. Like I've had clients that have been like, actually – see like young guys in the gym you know hip thrusting a certain weight or deadlifting a certain weight or whatever she's like and then I just walk over and do maybe it. Yeah. do an extra five <laughs> kilos or something <laughs> and they feel like such a boss that's so yeah. cool yeah so on that note like what is your how would you describe your current nutrition and training like what, what is your current training let's talk about that okay well I just started a new program this week Go just mom. purely for um because now we've got the new puppy and like yesterday she went for five walks because she's full of beans and whatever and so I really got to sort of work around her so I was having two lower days two upper days yeah but now I've just got three separate full body days yes I love the full body days I think I think even if nothing else, they're so refreshing. When yeah. you've done up Yeah, and lower. I did that for ages. And then, yeah, so last week I had a deload on that, the, the two <laughs> upper, two lower. And this week I've just started. And actually, to tell you the honest truth, I pretty much just wrote down all the exercises that I like to do and then went, okay, I'm going to do that, 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 you know, like full Together. body that day. Yeah. Yep. And I'm going to do all those ones on Wednesday and all those ones on Friday and, yeah. Then, and good. then if there is a day that I do miss, like today driving here, whatever, if I, you know, if I don't get to train properly, at least I've trained two full body days this week. Big yes to this. Done Love a shitload that. of steps with the puppy. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Is there any actual cardio or is it more just walking the dog? Um, walking the dog and Tuesday night I take pump class. Oh, yeah, which is... And I do yeah. that, uh, yeah, and so I don't go heavy. I use that as like a bit of a cardio session yeah. for me. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And then, yeah, that's about it. I love it. And then um, current nutrition, like what do you do? Uh, <laughs> at the moment I'm on about 1,800 calories, just, yeah, minimum of 120 grams of protein, Making sure I get my fiber up because I did have a bit of a thing with that like late last year, early this yeah. year. And I that's think that's good. that's one thing, especially as people get older, like people start to get into, um, not to go too off topic, but you know, like bowel cancer or even yeah. people having digestive issues. Like a lot of older people need to get the colonoscopies, all of those things. I think fiber is becomes a massive thing when you're older and even when I've spoken to older people like not to get we won't get too gross I promise but when people have been old like when people are older and they have had some level of discomfort there with digestion and being able to go to the toilet and stuff so many people of older people have said to me like you take for granted going to the toilet yeah like being able to go to the toilet and then you start to, you have to look at your fruit and your fiber and everything a little bit more and make sure it's really on point because when you've had an issue of not being able to go to the toilet it's like yeah it's a great feeling when you can so I think that's one thing as people get older for every age we obviously want yeah. to prioritize you know fruit veg fiber and all of that but I think young people think they can get away with it I think I see young people quite often like not eating enough fruit, not doing that thing. I, I literally have had someone say to me once, this is a long time ago, I don't want to waste my calories on fruit. And oh, I'm my like, God. <laughs> and I was honestly like, all right, actually, shit, this is on me as the educator. I need to take this and, and make sure this doesn't ever get said in the Eat Like Ruby world ever That's again. That is crazy. <laughs> but I honestly did see that. I reckon that would be four or five mm. years ago. And I, I thought to myself... This is on me. For the, the fact that this young girl th- genuinely thinks that, mm. I'm not having anyone else in it like Ruby ever think this again. That's nuts. I know. But, yeah, young people do just take for granted, even, like, with training and that. Like, they think they don't have to, but, like, once you hit 30, your muscle starts to deteriorate and, like, even though you can build it up, it's harder as you get older. So, yeah. like, keep that going. Like, definitely keep... I think it's like, it it can be an age thing. And I think it's even when you have, like when I think about the fact that I've had injuries and when I think about everything I went through after dad and everything, people say to me now, like, you know, do you like training on your own or, you know, do do you get sick of lifting weights or whatever? And I genuinely am like, 
after going through those things and feeling like you've had times where you feel like you can't train or you can't do what you want, you just are so grateful any yeah. day you can. Yeah. I honestly feel like any day I can wake up and go to the gym and do a session where I'm like, that was a great session, like mm. physically and mentally, that is one of the greatest feelings. And when you've had phases, whether it's because of age or an injury or a sickness or anything in your life, when you've had a phase where you've felt like you really couldn't do it, I think even COVID, when people couldn't train in COVID. And then, yeah. you know, when you get back in the gym, you're just like, I will never take this shit for granted again. <laughs> like, yeah. it, it really is like that. Hey, and it's probably, you know, for older people as well, when they have started to lose certain movements or yeah. like you said had some sort of bone health issues whatever it might be you just start to think like oh yeah shit all right what can I do and I'm gonna make sure I bloody do it yep <laughs> like, yeah for sure and you've got to take you've got to people have to take responsibility for that themselves too because I'm bagging like the medical profession but they don't care they like if yeah. something goes wrong like I you know somebody's got like a heart condition they're quite happy to just hand out the buddy prescription yeah and not really worry about your lifestyle yeah there's the prescription oh, and then you go back a couple of months later oh well we will up that prescription you know like yeah not sort of work with you to get off I that. remember when like I had an older overweight male doctor when, remember when they said I had arthritis in my back <laughs> and he was just basically without saying stop exercising, pretty much said stop Mm. exercising. And I was, I remember thinking like I have enough education and just awareness and intelligence and everything to kind of take this with a grain of salt. I think I actually just had to go there as a middleman for like a referral or something. So I remember just thinking like, yeah, whatever, give me the piece of paper. Like I'm never coming back. But I genuinely remember thinking if I didn't have those things, how many people are getting that advice? Yeah, exactly. And thinking, well, the doctor told me to sit on the couch. Like, yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's so crazy. So not to, you know, bag the medical professionals no. or whatever, there's good ones out there. But I think, yeah, that it can be times where, like you said, they do just want to do a pill or... Yeah. Yeah. Like so a, people aren't getting the right information yeah. to sort of help their life. Well, even when I broke my wrist, they said a woman in her 50s will just plaster it yeah deal with it for like it'll just set and that'll be it and I was lucky that I found that good surgeon to say no I don't want you know I want to be able to use it they were just yeah happy to just patch me up and on your way so yeah and then like make do yeah yeah far out what a time to be alive I know but coming back to like the last Mm. little thing we'll speak about your nutrition yeah that's what we were talking about my nutrition and training yeah yeah God knows how we got there. I don't know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you said like you do about 1,800 calories. That's what we were saying. You have noticed as you got older, fiber. It's that simple. Who it knew? Is. Who it actually is. knew? I it's know. that bloody simple. And, and staring and you down can, the barrel of the camera. And you can have good food with 1,800 calories. 100%. Yeah. Like, that's a lot. Like I... If I'm in a fat loss phase, I usually go to about 1,600. And I can easily manage that like Again. and still have good, yummy stuff. How simple. <laughs> and still have a couple of glasses of wine on the weekend. Yeah. In it. I yeah. actually love it. It's just like most of the time I eat 1,800. When I want to tighten things up, I go to 1,600. Rocket science. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> We've found the cure. Um, no, but I think that's really cool. And that was what I kind of wanted to point out. I feel like you're almost similar to Shaq in a sense where – you've kind of just got your foods and your meals and your routines during the week and you sort of roughly know the numbers of yeah. how that works for you. And then on the weekend, you know, you've got your wines, Jack's got his KFC. Yeah. And you kind of know, like, I am on my game during the week. And it's not ever in that mindset of, like, diet all week, blowout weekend. It's no. literally a, a slightly tighter diet during the week that I still enjoy and then a slightly looser weekend yeah. that I still enjoy. Yeah, like, exactly. It's yeah. not one extreme to the next. There's such a sweet spot in the middle, and I feel like it's almost like we we edge a little bit one way for most days and then we edge a little bit the other yeah. way for some other days. Yeah. And just Yeah, and just enjoy without – really thinking too much about it and I think even coming back to what we said before for you it's been a very long time so I've spoken before on the podcast where people are like oh it's this for two weeks and then it's maintenance and then my (laughs) surplus over here and my deficit next Friday and then in October I'll do this and it's 
like have we stopped for a second and been like let's just enjoy my food and my yep. training yeah <laughs> like it's almost this constant like what's the next phase what's the next goal mm. and it's like you're just like I've actually just been doing this for a long time and it's actually quite enjoyable yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, it's funny because like and when people say oh I haven't got time to track it's like it's not hard I it? think I, I think when people think I don't have time to track I think sometimes the initial phase can be a little bit confusing and overwhelming but I think people make that a lot harder than it has to be and I'm thinking about when this podcast is going to come out because I've got some specific podcasts I'm going to do in the coming weeks about that I think a lot of people get into the flexible dieting and the tracking food and whatever and it is it can be a level of confusion or you know you just don't get it and rightly so but then I think people are like Oh, recipes and, you know, everyone's eating donuts and Nutella and Biscoff and pizza and burgers and how do I make all of this fit? And even I see people, um, and I'm definitely going to speak to this in the coming weeks, I see people that are like, I want, or like they kind of word it and they think they want a brand new meal plan every day. Yeah. And it's like, forget tracking, forget anything else. Let's talk about grocery shopping, finances, food prep, time management, do you want to make, let's say you eat four times a day, do you want to make 28 brand new meals a week? Do you want to pay for 28 brand new meals a week? Do you want the waste yeah. of making every meal once and throwing the rest <laughs> out? The time of being like, what's today's lunch? Oh, it's Biscoff banana pancake and waffles. If- and what's the ingredients? Oh, this will take me half an hour. <laughs> and the stupid thing is if they weren't in a fat loss phase or whatever – they hadn't gone into this in the first place, they probably have the same sandwich every day. One hundred. Anyway, One hundred. <laughs> like for the last 10 years, probably gone to the bakery and bought a sandwich every day. So what's the difference? Everyone has <laughs> their foods. And do you know, it's actually a fun fact. Obviously, I've done like a lot of study and I came across a fact and it's just stuck in my mind. They reckon human beings rotate through the same 28 foods. Mm. People have 28 foods that are sort of like your go-to. And if you think about it, like if I went to the shops right now and I was like, shit, I haven't planned my food, no idea what I'm eating this week or whatever, I would straight away be like, yogurt, cereal, mm, berries. frozen berries, <laughs> Nutella, some meat, some salad bags. And you're like, I literally get this shit every week. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't need to write a list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so funny. And when I heard that, I just remember thinking, shit, that's true. And it's a funny thing to think about then. I think people should then ask, like, what are my 28? Are they, mm. are they good? Do they serve me? Do I need to look yeah. at these? Like, shit, yeah. if I'm eating this similar. And that's not to say we never eat a 29th different food. But for the most part, yeah. if you're rotating yeah. through the same things, it's worth asking yourself, shit, what are these things? <laughs> yeah. So, so. Yeah. But, I, I, yeah, I don't know where we were going, but I was just going to say, like, if anybody, like, older, I always say to people, just weigh the food, just to make sure you don't overeat. Yeah. If you have that, those kitchen scales on your bench, even when I pour a wine, I literally, <laughs> m- like, weigh it so I know that it's like I've had that right amount rather yeah. than pouring the glass you know, your glass is this big, but you go to the pub and buy one, you only get that much in the bottom yeah. anyway. So, like, why fill that up? Like, yeah. yeah. And I think there's probably so much that could be said there, and we won't go too far. But even, I think you, you, I don't know about you, but I'll just, even if I'm not weighing something, you just by habit put it on the scale. Oh, yeah, make a cup of tea. The cup goes on the scale. <laughs> you pour the water in. Yeah. And then you're like, shit, was I doing that? But for myself right now, like, I, I'm so loose with my tracking. It's not even funny right now. Like I definitely don't track strict and I've spoken about my own goals this year. So it just makes sense not to, but also like I do eat, you know, we all see it on Instagram, I eat the same meals every day. And when I make like that Nutella yogurt bowl, perfect example, I very rarely have tracked my day in my fitness pal and actually worked that meal out. But every time I make it, I put in the same amount of berries more so to know I'm getting like enough fruit, enough fiber. And then the same amount of Nutella or whatever. So it's like, it doesn't always have to be like weighing and tracking and then taking some out and measuring and making sure it all fits and all those things. Sometimes it's as simple as just like weighing out that meal, like you would portion out making a cake because you're like, I don't want this cake to be a shit show. Yeah. Like I want to yeah. make sure I kind Have of the right ingredients. Yeah. nail the requirements. I just want to make sure this meal is actually sort of fits the requirements of what I want. Yeah. Definitely. Is there anything else you would like to say to the listeners while you're on the mic? (laughs) Just actually embrace getting older. When people like whinge about getting older, that really bothers me when I hear people go, oh, I'm getting old, I'm getting old. Yeah, (laughs) honestly, I love myself more every year. 
Amen, sister. I love myself more at, at 58 than I did at 48. That's so cool. Mm. That is really cool. I love it because I feel like I am um, – not that I'm getting older, but – do you, you sometimes you feel like I feel like I'm still in my mid twenties, and then I'm like, I think I <laughs> so said, do I. <laughs> <laughs> I even said to Kristen yesterday about the podcast, and I was like, "Oh, Mum's coming, and it's really cool because she's nearly sixty. And I was like, you know, it's easy for me to sit there at twenty eight with all the answers. <laughs> and then as I was leaving, I was like, "By the way, Kristen, like I'm actually thirty one. I'm not twenty eight. Like, <laughs> I don't even know why I said that. Um, but that's so funny. So, no, but embrace your age." Because a lot of people don't get to live this long. 100%. That is, yeah. that's so, a great yeah. thing. Yeah, so don't whinge about it, that's for sure. Yeah, even if we mm. think about everything we've just spoken about with everyone's stories, mm. it's like you've, you're here at 58, eating good, training good, living good. Yeah. What's not to love? Exactly. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I've loved having you here. I, I love think being here. people will get so much from this combo. I think it'll be really cool. Um, and I feel like everyone's going to want to follow along on the muscle gain journey. <laughs> I feel like we're going to have to spruce up your social media presence. <laughs> Sophie's little marketing brain is ticking over. <laughs> She's like, let's get, let's get Rubes' mum it's on it. It's funny when you said like a lot of people would love this combo. If they'd only – we've had this combo a million times. I know. Just as – Fly on the wall yeah, vibes. I'm sitting on the couch watching Home and Away. <laughs> combo. Hang on, pause it. <laughs> what about so-and-so at the gym? <laughs> for long-time listeners, we'll get you back in a year's time for the muscle yeah. gain phase. Sounds good. Which will be perfect for YouTubers. So check it out on YouTube. We should do some sort of like, I don't know, before photo or something. Mm, yeah. like remember that day you went to the potty? Yeah. Here you were. Now you've done your muscle gain phase. Are you thinking... Muscle gain in time to then do fat loss pre-birthday. For, yeah. Yeah. Love it. I want to look like Suzanne Nibigal on my birthday. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Love it. All right. That is a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Mum, so much for coming. Thanks for having me. We'll be back soon.